the boat sails fast in the Bosporus Straits as we head from Europe to Asia. Soon we'll walk in the streets of Istanbul, Turkey's largest city and cultural historic center, one of the world's 15th largest cities. It is here that we are to meet Dr. Hakan Choke, gynecologist and obstetrician, advocate for natural birth, mindful hypnobirth, Lamasse certified childbirth educator and active birth trainer. Neshe Karabeki, his life and work companionship is here to let us know about the days and works of Hakan Chake. <laughs> And tonight, uh, let's welcome to our very first guest, Dr. Hakan Çoker, who is from Istanbul, Turkey, uh, obstetrician, living and working in Istanbul. But first, please let me introduce this event first, uh, because I think uh, it is very important for us, uh, you know, well, actually life stories are important, isn't it? Uh, they are so valuable and so um, so important that we can explore a person uh, and to learn what he has done, uh, what he hasn't done maybe uh, in, in his life uh, and in his life story. I always say, uh, as a prenatal psychologist and birth psychologist, I always say, in order to teach another person's, another baby's life and existence, first, we have to understand our story first and our history first. So uh, that's why uh, I really value about uh, this activity. And once more, uh, thank you for Olga and thank you for Antonella. Uh, to have this initiation, this lovely and wonderful initiation. Uh, well, uh, if we talk about uh, life stories, uh, you can maybe remember your own also, your own birth story, life story, and what kind of things inspired you in your life. Uh, so that's what actually we are going to explore tonight uh, with Dr. Hakan Choker, uh, and uh, thanks God, uh, there are many, many pioneers all around the world uh, still exist and still inspire us. Uh, so what we are fishing, wishing, what we are aiming here with this activity, uh, let's spot these pioneers. Let's make an interview with them. Let's explore about their life story uh, and uh, let's make a recording <laughs> and then uh, uh, again watch, again learn, and uh, again let them to guide us. So I think it's, good to go in, it's better to start because I think we're going to learn lots of things uh, about Do Dr. Hakan's life story. Uh, Hakan, welcome tonight. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm a bit scared now. I mean, I feel like I'm in a free session of psychotherapy, kind of, you know. It's a bit, it's a bit like this. So, but don't worry. <clears throat> I will be very nice of you. <laughs> be gentle, uh, please. <laughs> yes, I will. I promise. So I would like to introduce Dr. Hakan Choker, but I am going to give um, uh, time to his introduction himself first but i must say uh, i because i promise i'm going to be nice uh, and gentle to him uh, first of all he is my husband and secondly he is my life partner 
and also my business partner. So that's why I am uh, more than more than 100. Uh, I'm honored actually to present uh, him and his life. Hakan, let's start. Very basic question. No therapeutic question. <laughs> Only very basic one. Uh, could you please explain who you are first? Yes. And then slowly, slowly, uh, we're going to warm up, of course, a little bit deeper and deeper. So how, who are you, first of all? Okay. Uh, who am I? I'm an obstetrician of age 56 from Istanbul, Turkey. And most of my time, nearly 19 years, was like a classical obstetrician, which is just aiming and targeting the health of the mother and the baby. And for me, the health was only heart beating and nice breathing, no tissue damage, and that was the success. Uh, but then in 2003, I started... Uh, Going into the childbirth education business, and I, I was seeing that like a business in those days, but that changed my life. And since then, I'm an advocate for humanistic and respectful births all over Turkey and the world. And the, there are many life-changing things in, the, in my life. And one was participating in a childbirth education course. And then the follow-ups are all like hypnobirthing, Lamas courses, active birth courses, working with doulas and working with midwives. And after that, everything changed for me. And yes, I did decide why I was an obstetrician. It was the aim was to build a respectful environment for mothers and babies. And in 2010, we came to together with Hi. you and we created Istanbul Birth Academy, which is giving lectures to families, educations. And since then, since 2006, I am every month giving childbirth education classes, nonstop. Still, I am doing it. And in 2012, we started also educating professionals to be a childbirth educator and doula educator, doula trainer. So we had obstetricians, midwives, childbirth educators all over Turkey coming to us and being a childbirth educator and being a doula and a birth psychotherapist. And that also changed many things. And through them, we can reach to many cities, many other doctors, many other families and many other midwives, everybody. And still, we are working like this actively. Wow. That's, that's a short <laughs> It was a, well, it was, let's say it was very enough introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Well, of course, I'm, you know, I have got lots of questions, but I have to start. Well, mm. I feel I have to start uh, from the very beginning. <laughs> Uh, it means uh, your conception, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to start like, you know, <laughs> you know, because we believe uh, in prenatal science uh, that everything is started <laughs> from there. The life story actually has started there. So, I mean, as far as you remember, of course, what was the... Um, uh, your cultural context and your maybe your country's condition and when was it what what year did you say your conception 1965 time? it was 65. Uh, so, october 1965 right your birthday. i remember very 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 briefly that day you know <laughs> i wish i say that but i don't of course but after dealing with this uh, prenatal sciences of course i also questioned my mother about those days. Before that, I was not curious even about it. But uh, because of this, I asked my mother and my aunt and everybody what was happening in those days. Then I realized that uh, when I was conceived, uh, my mother was in Germany, actually. <laughs> she was working there as a midwife. My mother is a midwife. 
My aunt is a midwife. My grandmother is a midwife. My father's mother is a midwife. And the rest, I think, probably goes on. Uh, so it was a family business for me. I couldn't be a midwife because they don't let the male in in those days. So when uh, I was conceived, I was in Germany, actually. It was there. She was working there in Germany as a, a midwife and nurse uh, there. And the funny thing is, uh, they were not married in those days, to tell the truth. It was, it was shocking for me to learn this when I questioned. And probably, probably, my mother never admits that, but probably they taught a lot about having me or not for at least three months, probably. <laughs> Then I was accepted, okay, let's have the baby. So that was, I started with a good story of that. I don't know what the effects are today, to, today, to do to nowadays, but still I can say that uh, whenever uh, I go in somewhere, I'm always silent and I want to be accepted always. Uh, always, whenever I meet someone, I still, at this age and experience, want them to accept me first. Maybe it's because of those days, maybe from the warm days. I don't know. You will tell me then. <laughs> oh, are you expecting to analyze you? <laughs> maybe. This is the first time. Nobody knows how, how the... This is... Uh, what this, this event is, works yeah. right yeah. yes okay so actually what you, when you say this um uh, you mentioned when you were introducing yourself you mentioned about uh, uh how much you were taking care of the respect bird and respectful bird and uh, how how did you take the bird from somewhere to here in your country and maybe maybe there were some some uh, moments from yourself against your colleagues or maybe some other um, you know i don't know maybe midwives or some other moment so i was I, now when you say this i always wanted uh, to have an acceptance uh, to confirmation uh, so it i don't know it reminds me um, about your advocacy uh, or maybe kind of your fight uh, towards the uh, your colleagues actually you know i'm here and yeah. uh, whatever you say i'm here i exist huh yeah yeah and another thing i remember is when my mother was pregnant she had the chance to give birth in germany in those days and when i talked to her later she said i wanted to come back to turkey she said why i said why i mean Staying in Germany was a good idea in those days, you know, about passport and European and everything things. She said in those days, Germany was doing so many cesareans. So she escaped from Germany to Turkey to have a natural birth. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. This is, I mean, now it is vice versa. So I know it here is vice versa, yeah. it is totally different. Okay. So when I when you mention uh, how can your mother and father, uh, it is also important, but uh, if I mean, if you want to start about your uh, mother's pregnancy time, because you said uh, she was in Germany and she was working as a midwife. Uh, so what do you feel about her pregnancy? Because her pregnancy means actually, you know, your existence. Uh, mm -hmm. So what do you feel? What do you think about her situation? her conditions, your father's conditions? It was, I think, I mean, I didn't talk to her very, very briefly, openly about these things, but uh, I don't want to also upset her about that, to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have the feeling that it was full of conflicts and everything, you know, decision-makings, conflicts, mm -hmm. deciding this or that or this or that, which is right and things. And in the end, of course, they decided to get married and they came to Turkey and they had a, a wedding of the, my aunt, two years older than my mother, was getting married also. So they got married together in the same wedding. 
Probably after that, it was all right. I mean, uh, it was full of probably nice because already decided. Maybe I had some peace in the wall, probably that they're yes having me <laughs> this time. Uh, the bird story is also interesting. Uh, Please go on. Hmm. I didn't know that also because she was when she came back to Turkey, she was working in a very big uh, hospital of. Uh, birth hospital, mm -hmm. uh, delivery hospital, and it was very big, and they were responsible for the night shifts with the aunt together. And I said, where did you give birth to me? She said, I didn't give birth there. I said, why? I mean, she changed the hospital. She went to another hospital. I said, why? Because she said, because there were many, many friends of mine there. And I didn't want them to see me and I didn't want to scream in front of them. So I escaped from them so that I can have my privacy. So she went to another hospital, which is called Suleymaniye for the Turkish readers, say listeners. From Zeynep Kamil, she went to Suleymaniye, another hospital, and she gave birth there. And still she said, I couldn't, I wanted to scream a lot. But I didn't, and I couldn't, because I was a midwife. I was scared. I was a bit ashamed of screaming. <laughs> so she holded everything in herself. Yes, she had a nice bird. She always says, she never says it as it's so traumatic. She said it was good. Uh, but the thing I remember from my bird story is holding herself inside and keeping her mouth shut a little bit so that she's not a bit ashamed. Uh, am I affected through that in my professional life? I don't like shouting and screaming and also, I mean, I am a silent person to tell the truth. I'm a bit nice, uh, easy character and I don't like telling off people, anybody working around me. So maybe it comes from those days. I don't know. Mm, okay. I think, well, I think so. <laughs> so I agree with you. Uh, so when, when you talk about your mother and father, I, I've, I have a feeling that you never mentioned about your father, Hakan. Um, My father, I mean, I don't know what to mention, but they were divorced when I was uh, four years old, five, hmm. five years old nearly. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have good relations with my father until I grown up and I read a lot and I had peace with him after I had my character back, you know, as a human and grown up person. Now I understand him very well, what he does and everything, but I wasn't in a good mood with him until I was like 25, 26, but now it's okay. And he died when I was 12. 12. Mm. And just the beginning of your adolescent time, huh? As being a man. And uh, I don't know if a man has, is, is, has ever time to grow up, but yes, after that, I don't think man never grows up. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to know. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I see, but 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 what I feel is like when let's say you are trying trying to be a man, uh, there is always sometimes a model man model. So what do you think you take to who whom you I didn't have any. Role model? I didn't have any. I am very pleased with that to tell the truth. I mean, I we were always like three individuals. I had a four year old younger brother. And he's the same. And we were all three of us at home together. And we were all individuals and responsible for their own movements. So I don't think I had any problem with not having a role model for me. I don't maybe, feel that. Maybe you create your own role model yourself, huh? Maybe. I don't know. I, mean, I didn't okay. have any problem with it. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, let's go on a little bit. Um, because I really wonder if you have any significant, significant story you can tell us about your childhood. Uh, and of course, it relates it with uh, what you become right now. Is there any kind of like, oh, this moment or this story really make me feel what I have come become now? I don't know if you have 
Anything in your mind, any spots, any memory or no. anything? No, okay. I don't have it, but what I know is I always wanted to be a doctor when I was 17. So I uh, graduated from the high school when I was 18, 19, 19. And uh, I always wanted to be a doctor, but I never knew why I was. It was like, a, there's no other choice, but I never thought about it. And when, when I finished the medical school, I always want only, I wrote uh, obstetrics and gynecology. I Still, I don't know why. And when I was in this prenatal sciences uh, papers and then reading about it, of course, I can see the transgenerational feedbacks mm -hmm. now, but I had no idea. When I finished the specialization, I worked five years in a town, in a small town with six midwives. We were having 1000 births a month, me and six midwives together. And after three years, suddenly, I don't know how, but suddenly it just came to me that I have to do childbirth education. Before that, we had no idea about childbirth education. In our specialization, nobody told us anything about childbirth education, but suddenly I was very interested about it. But when I checked Istanbul about childbirth educations and everything, there was nothing. They were all opening and closing, opening and closing. And there wasn't much interest in that, but still I wanted to, but I have to wait for the magical moment until 2003. In 2003, I was in a, a Congress in Turkey for obstetrics and gynecology, but I went one day before and there I saw childbirth education course. And this uh, nursery faculty is doing their first childbirth education course. So I just sneaked in. We laugh about it when we talk about it. Sneaking in to congresses and uh, workshops is sometimes very good, you know. So I went in, then that changed my life suddenly because the first time I heard about La Boyer, Grant Le Decreet, La Masse, things like that. Yes, I am an educated person, universities, specialization. I don't know why I didn't check it before. It is very important. I mean, all through our uh, internships and specialization, the situation of the mothers and the babies were awful, but it was normal for us. Like the mothers were lonely in birth, in a small room, sometimes two or three of them in, five meters square near, nearly mm -hmm. and no bed. And they were giving birth to next to each other, only curtains between them. When no one-to-one no -one support at all. And when the babies were born, they were taken away to a, there was a cold baby room and the babies were staying there. This is 1990 years, yeah, 1990. When I finished specialization, it was still the same, 1994. So all six, seven, eight, seven, nine, ten babies in a baby room and screaming all day and only given to the mothers for breastfeeding for like an hour. And they were also in the postpartum ward in, a, in one room, six of them sleeping together or staying together. I don't know why we didn't question. And wow. I think if I find the answer of this, because it is, I think it's the same among the young senior obstetricians, you know, I still don't know why I never questioned. If I find that answer now, I can help the young ones to question it because still they don't question. They do whatever is told to them. That's what we did. Maybe it's also because we didn't have the internet in those days to tell the truth. Maybe it will be different today uh, because now we can reach to the knowledge easily. That's why maybe everything is getting better and better more quickly. But it was like that in those days and we never questioned. I and feel do, you, really, do, you think, do you think it's happening again for this new generation as well? Right it now? is happening again. Hmm. I mean, they, they have a big resistance. When I talk to them about 
okay, let's stop the spotlight on the baby when the baby is being born, the first second, because his, her eyes are affected and it's trauma for him or her. They say, you are exaggerating, you're showing, you know, showing off. So uh, in, in the last 12 years, I was trying to tell them this is, this is very important. That's if you start stopping that spotlight on the baby, like this, for example, you know, it is when you put the spotlight, you, you don't feel good. It's like a sample of respecting a baby. It starts with that. It's a simple thing. You don't need any money. You don't need any philosophy or anything. It means I see the baby. I know the baby feels. I know the baby, the baby is in the mind. Uh, Record. Recording. So it means, yes, uh, I see the baby. So I respect the baby. It's a metaphor. It's a, it's a symbol of respecting a baby. So in Turkey, we are trying to do that now, but still we managed it maybe 40, 50% at most in 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> I see. But actually, how can I can, <clears throat> sorry, I can feel, well, when you say this, uh, the babies cannot be seen cannot be respected um, it seems you were not respected and you were not seen of course the baby. Mm. maybe so I really understand and I feel how important for you uh, what you are doing for the babies so whatever you are doing for the babies maybe you are also doing for your history as well it can be put in that verse too. I mean, I, I won't say no to that. Mm. Once uh, we can uh, do something, I feel, of course, more light, more relaxed. So I can jump because we have thousands of things to continue. We just wait there. Mm. So there are many things to question about respect, being respectful to a woman and baby, but we are in the first step yet i mean mm -hmm. then we will have the skin to skin contacts and first uh, examinations on the chest the golden hour we can't even go to them yes we talk and we reach to many women through our students thanks to them that they're coming to us to learn childbirth education and being a doula but they mainly learn respecting the mother and the baby and once the like me going on the childbirth education business, them coming to us, I think it's the same. They want uh, something different for birth, for women. They say, there must be another way, and this is not right. So thanks to them that they spread the word to many families. At the moment, at, at least every month, we reach to hundreds of families through them. Uh, but uh, still, I couldn't find a way to talk to the senior young obstetricians at their first year. So my aim is to touch them first before I say they're poisoned with delivering babies, you know. What's your job delivering baby? Well, we don't deliver babies. They just get, they born. So we just wait there and, and respect them and support them. Mm -hmm. They need the doctors only in 10% of birth at most. The rest is a support. Midwifery, support, respect, one-to-one -one support, everything like that. They don't get it. They think they are delivering them. I understand. Yeah, yeah. I was the same. I mean, I'm not blaming yeah. them. I was yeah. the same nine years. Ago. So I, if I find the reason why I did that, why I didn't ask questions, like I was doing 100% episiotomy for first-time mothers. I don't know why, because e even those days, all the books were saying, don't do it routinely. Even those days, but we didn't follow it. We did what our teachers told us and they did what their teachers told them. Oh. So I must find a real a way to understand myself why I didn't do it, <laughs> but I still couldn't find it. Oh. But it seems actually you start uh, to train obstetricians, doctors, midwives, uh, doulas, and psychologists and nurses. 
from a different perspective. It's very interesting. Uh, as I understand, uh, your doula uh, training is a kind of a, um, I don't know, umbrella, because I never heard any, any uh, trainings all over the world who teach uh, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, health professions, especially doctors, as, a, as being a doula. So, you know what? what is yes, I think we are the first doing that. I, I, um, he, another thing is in a childbirth education course, first time a midwife sitting next to a nurse, sitting next to a doctor, sitting next to a bank lawyer who wants to be a doula, sitting next to a yoga teacher and, it's, and sitting next to a psychologist. And before that, two years ago, we started uh, uh, quest, not questioning, uh, asking them to come for an interview before their childbirth education. Because if we, before that, in those days, we didn't do it. They were coming and really getting in a shock. I mean, asking themselves, what am I doing here? I'm an obstetrician and sitting next to a lawyer. Are we going to learn the same thing? It is a very shocking, but then after nine months, when he or she, the doctor sits next to this lawyer and understand why the lawyer is there or the bank person or whatever, uh, she understands that this woman wants to help women leaving a, his own, her own career, you know, her own proficiency, leaving a job, leaving money, and coming to that course to help other women. Once the doctor understands it, they start working together, and which is great. So this is the first childbirth education where they sit together like this for nine months, at least in those days, nine modules. And nowadays it's a hybrid education. And I understand becoming a team. That's why we, as Istanbul Birth Academy, very, very, it's important for us to talk about birth teams. Because birth is something, it's so big that, I mean, it is so big that nobody can, herself, himself can handle it. Even midwives, of course, they will say, okay, we midwives doing everything. There are very strong midwives. Still, they need a help. Sometimes from a doula, sometimes from a psychologist, and sometimes from a doctor. So being a team and understanding it and with no hierarchy, you know, equal inequality. I mean, we are not, I don't want to be a boss working with a midwife. It's, it's, it's so boring. I mean, <laughs> telling the midwife what to do. She should be telling me when she needs me, you know, and working in an equality is wonderful in a teamwork. So actually, uh, when you tell us about your uh, mom, mother, your aunt, and your grandmother, maybe there are all different, more transgenerational uh, coming from being a midwife. So this is, I think it's very important. And you're talking about uh, being a team together uh, and uh, with the same level, no hierarchy. Uh, so I think it means a lot about also uh, uh, coming from your transgenerational part. Um, Olga is also mentioning here in the chat uh, about what you got from your midwives uh, in your family, like your mother, grandmother. Um, this is also my question. What, what do you think you are carrying from them? Power. They were very powerful because my mother was, when she finished the school, she went to a town and in the town, in those days, midwifery was great business. I mean, great. They were so much respected. And in Turkey, in those days, uh, home births are luxury. The one who doesn't have money was going to the hospital. This is 1953. So the one who has some money was asking the midwife to home so that uh, she can give birth at home. And she was saying I, she was uh, nearly 17 when she was there or 18 at most. She said even 50, 60 year old man was getting up when we were passing, walking by 
and respecting us as a midwife. So I was the only midwife in the town working at the hospital and going to home birth too. So the power comes from there, can be doing everything. And she was doing many home births in those days. And the second thing is, of course, the respect of the woman and the babies. Like in, I mean, when we go back to those years, all midwives were like that all over the world. They were not getting orders from doctors. They were working with doctors because there were also few doctors. So there were few midwives working with few doctors in a respect. Now, most of the midwives at hospitals become, oh, you know, uh, doing the orders of the doctors, which is not, uh, it doesn't work with birth. They have to have their autonomy everywhere. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Otherwise, they stop being a midwife, they become a nurse. I oh. call them nurses. Oh. Uh, oh. Somebody who is doing something against science, just because the doctor says, and not saying a word, is not being a midwife, it's a being a nurse. Still nurses can say no to them. And here, let's talk about Turkey. They, have, they think they have no right to say no. And the doctors also say, I am responsible, you will do this. The simple thing is, today I was supervising a midwife about childbirth education at the birth at her hospital. I said, are they being hungry? I mean, are they stopped being eating something? They said, all of them, she said. I said, why don't you say anything to them? And she said, the doctor says, if you know more than me, then you can do everything. And we can't say anything. So I try to support her to come together with other midwives and nicely telling the doctor that this is evidence-based. Let's give some food and drink to the mothers. In this century, we have hospitals like this. So the midwives who cannot say a word to the doctor, knowing that this is not right, is called a professional trauma. So they are having trauma every day, not doing what they believe in and what they read in. And this is sad, really. And they don't know it. The, the, the point is, they have no idea about it. All of them, and they, they put their energy, instead of questioning themselves, they put their energy to fighting others, like the doctors fighting to them, kind of. <laughs> but I wonder what happened, Hakan, in, in, in Turkey. I mean, the midwives were like a boss and very powerful, like your mother, because you said, you know, the, the power is uh, coming from your mother, it's beautiful, uh, and she's a midwife, and the, the power and the midwife together, and then now you're talking about, I don't know, maybe uh, just getting the order from the doctor, the midwife, so what happened in, your, in Turkey? The midwife from here and from there. And where, where is the team? Where is the power? I what think is your is, idea. I think it is because uh, the private hospitals came. So the, the, the state hospitals were not in a good condition. So to compensate that, many private hospitals being opened. And the doctors started being the only responsible person for that delivery and asked to participate in every birth to take money. They, I don't say they do it money for money, but in order to get the fee and deserve it, they have to be in the uh, birthing room and delivering the baby. So that was being an obstetrician, good obstetrician, delivering in a good way, not supporting in a good way. So, and the more it came, the more responsible they are, the more patients they have in private hospitals, the more interventions they had to do because the uh, families starting, started saying, you offered me a nice bird. So when something goes wrong, they started suing, blaming. The more blame, it means the more cesarean they did, the more interventions they did. So they sunk together, you know, to, to the very bottom of the ocean. And they don't know how to go out now. Because nowadays natural birth is more, more fashion, let's say. Uh, 
going to the more cesarean was easy. Coming back from that is not easy. It will take more time. It will take more effort. It will take more education. So because together we change the culture, which is a pity, but still I am hopeful with countries like us, like Brazil, like China, like anywhere, uh, I am hopeful because in their cells, they still have the memories of a physiologic uh, birth or and home birth too. So it's easy to gain back everything. For example, in breastfeeding, we didn't lose the culture. We keep the culture. But for natural birth, we lost it, but it's coming back. So pop, I, I will blame the system first, not supporting women and doctors enough both than the private hospital system and it is also not uh, very welcomed by many obstetricians nowadays because they, they are getting tired and tired going to uh, births every night so probably it's the private system it's the same in brazil probably it is true it is true yeah well actually i'm i'm feeling uh again jumping in, in into your uh, <laughs> past story uh, sorry i will i will come back uh, to turkey's condition but i also wonder uh, you got the power from your mother hakan uh, what is what is important uh, things taking from your father the qualities or any kind of behaviors or feelings from your father from my father mm -hmm. i don't remember i got anything sorry but <laughs> no, i don't no, no. i don't feel anything you know i don't feel i got anything from there they all say he was very joyful and sharing person and i'm quite the same probably i got that you know i like sharing <laughs> <laughs> that's one that's wonderful yes yes so actually it seems after your father gone uh, you you had a, a lovely team together with your mother and with your brother uh, so it is also important so actually you were like three of you yeah uh, uh, and like you are doing in your team uh, three of you Mm, uh, you yes, are working like <laughs> obstetrician, midwife, and birth psychologist together. <laughs> mm. uh, so I can feel, feel, you know, feel this uh, tree power uh, together. It is also interesting. Also, I never, yeah, sorry, go on. Please. I never heard my mom complaining about anything. She was working so hard as a midwife with one salary, two kids. We, luckily, we went to a... Uh, uh, high school where we stayed all week there and we we studied free uh, but she never complained she was doing everything working as a midwife plus home everything up for us and I, as you said when I was working in this business I was told a lot of things you know I was a charlatan I was showing off I was exaggerating I was doing all this for money and etc I never felt or oh, anything about complaining. I, I took everything as a feedback and tried to understand them. That's why the ones who were telling all these, at least half of them are respecting me now, which is good, which, is, which shows that we are in the, on the right way because I never blamed anybody. I, I, I don't like blaming doctors. It's easy. It's very, very easy to blame a doctor, you know, especially young midwives young anybody learning physiology and psychology starts blaming others but i was the same so why to blame instead of understanding everybody because if someone became a ob obstetrician or a midwife or a nurse it means they love people they they are in 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 need of helping others deep inside mm -hmm. so it's the our teachers task is to find that deep love, you know, and taking it out and make the person to uh, see it. Once they see it, they change. It takes mm -hmm. time, but yeah, yeah, I understand. But, well, um, actually, I I feel, or maybe you said like you you against uh, kind of because you you advocate uh, 
uh, woman's birth right and baby's birth right. So actually, sometimes you against your your own colleagues. Um, how do you feel about it? I mean, you said everybody sometimes call you charlatan or you know different names. I mean, it must be hard actually uh, when you stay still and because. I mean, you are a doctor, and it's important in Turkey to be a doctor. So you can be, you know, comfortable and work uh, as you can. So, I mean, what happened really? Why are you that different? <laughs> I told you before that suddenly I wanted to do childbirth education in 2003. I don't, it just came to me. And then okay. after the snaking, I started, I finished the Lamas courses. I did in England a hypnobirthing course, which was great. It changed my life because it changed. It's a big respect to the human being born in the meaning of hypno, in the hypnosis and birthing and everything and changes your language. Instead of saying patient, you call their name. And instead of saying pain, you call say surges and things like that and then uh, i also met uh, janet balaskas uh, in those years she came after six months of i finished hypnobirthing course i invited uh, the teacher to turkey and she came and in the list of the students joining the hypnobirthing course i noticed janet balaskas was there and she didn't write to us but she just you know, uh, signed in. So wow. she came, I was very excited. I said to her after the workshop, oh, can we do active birth training, you know, in Turkey? And she's a wonderful person and she's very strong and she's a doula, she's a yoga teacher. She's not a health professional, but she changed the birthing world with her uh, movements in England and the way she teaches active birth and everything, and still she's teaching, and she's a friend of us. So seeing those people working for it, I felt ashamed that I am not, you know, I should do something. And then I started, the life-changing bit is the Midwifery Today conferences. You know, in USA based they are, but they do every two years in uh, Germany, uh, Belgium, Bel Belgium. They do conferences there, and I started joining there. There, I met the traditional midwives. Yes, I said, this is what a midwife is. You know, they're very <laughs> good. They are, they are, they are trying to pass all the knowledge to the young ones. And I was the only doctor in 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 three hundred women there, and they were in a shock. A male obstetrician in midwifery conference. They start, they tried not, I wasn't noticed. I was like unseen person there. They, they didn't understand. Probably they don't have good relations in their countries. Maybe I don't know. Obstetricians, are they so high level or something? I don't know. So there I met them and they changed also my life. And everything I brought, I brought to the courses and I brought to the, uh, to Turkey about the physiology, the breech births, water births and drug-free techniques for relaxation and everything. And then all the midwives and nurses started being attracted to that, you know, me teaching wow. to them. I was expecting, wow. I was having uh, midwives and nurses to courses that I do with families. So they were coming and seeing me to teach it and changing. So in those wow. days, nobody was talking about this is 2006, seven, eight, natural birth in Turkey. I mean, there was nothing. I was Googling. I was the only one saying natural birth. <laughs> Probably there were many, but maybe not writing. And start, people started coming to my town to do natural birth. They said they couldn't find anywhere else because everybody's offering them cesareans. Mm -hmm. So them coming and the midwives coming and we doing hypnobirthing courses, active birth courses, open to university teachers from midwifery and uh, nursing, something started changing a lot. And they kind of, you know, it's like pushing the car. Once the car works, it goes fast. 
I was kind of the pusher, you know. <laughs> now they are very fast going, really good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Actually, you have a very traditional midwife at home, your mother. <laughs> and then you went to the Germany to find another, you know, traditional midwife all, all around the world. Uh, and you got lots of things from them. You got lots of things your, from your mother, from your aunt, from your grandmother. And uh, and you you had these all changes. Uh, it's the revolution, Hakan. Uh, are you realizing this, what you have done in Turkey? Are, yes. Do you realize this, really? I do sometimes realize, but then sometimes I feel a bit, a bit sad, you know? 12 years, every month, I have been telling the same thing. Like, stop the spotlight. Simple things, you know? And don't do routine interventions. And put the baby on the chest, cut the cord late. Among these, only one thing is achieved all over Turkey, cutting the cord late. Because it, is, it was talked in the conferences among obstetricians. But the rest, uh, I can't get to them. I mean, I, there are many, at least hundreds of uh, obstetricians that doing this. I'm not the only one, I can't say that. There are many, many now. Uh, but there are 5,500 obstetricians in Turkey, at least. So among them, maybe 200 are doing this. So we have more time and we have to work together with midwives plus birth psychologists plus doulas together. But what do midwives do in Turkey is, I don't understand why. They are trying to see doulas like their enemies for their proficiency. I mean, this is in this century, seeing a doula who is a woman has the right to choose any person being next to her in her birth and she can also choose where to give birth. Everybody accepts this ICM, International uh, uh, Confederation of Midwives. They accept this, everybody accepts this, but still seeing midwives and doulas being like enemies, we are in the business and in, we are in the chaos of that. So we are trying to make them understand that doulas are not their enemies. They don't take, take their work. Uh, they have to come together. So if they can come together, everybody, then there will be something happening. This happened in the world. Like it started with Sims in America, then became International Mother Baby Childbirth Organization. Now it is International Childbirth Initiative. These are not professional associations. They don't fight for the rights of the obstetricians or midwives. They fight for the rights of a woman and the baby. That's why in 2000, when was that? We created our association. It's called Hand to Hand for Birth. So it's not a 15. 15. It's not a proficiency uh, related and targeted thing. That's what we need in every country. We don't need midwives only fighting for their rights. We want something fighting for the rights of the woman and the baby, whoever comes there together. So I hope one day it will happen. Why I am sad? We are working, we are walking really slowly, still and slowly. And money affects everything. The uh, you know that private hospitals one side and it's the problem of the system and it should be done all over the world at some time so that's why i think this ici international childbirth initiative is very important for the future of the world uh, because it is supported by obstetricians figo supported by midwives international supported by pediatrics international and supporting by the non-profit White Ribbon Association uh, or organization in America, which is very big, doing uh, many researchers about it. So they came together, they say, okay, let's work together now. Mm. And I'm very excited is, about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 I am too also. I think this is very important, like, you know, hand-to-hand -hand for birth together, hand-to-hand -hand for birth 
for babies together uh, because actually this is uh, for our future, isn't it? Uh, this is for our new generation. I don't know. Of course, maybe we are not going to see or experience anything, but this is our responsibility, isn't it? Uh, what we are giving to the future. Yes, I like Michel Odent very much. I mean, he's like the guru of the natural physiologic birds. And I like his description of birth now. He says births are now can be divided into only two. One is birth in an environment of love, one in an environment of non-love, you know. When there is love there and respect there, that birth is good. It doesn't matter if it is vaginal, cesarean, or epidural, or whatever. Yes, it has effect, but mainly we need births that is respected by everybody supporting the birth there. That's what we are fighting for, trying to explain what it is our job is not to deliver babies our job is to support mothers to give birth in the way they want i don't say that it doesn't have to be vaginal birth in the way they want i mean i don't want to force anybody for a vaginal but if she needs a cesarean they can have it but then a mother baby friendly cesarean is a choice let's do it that's what we do it routinely now in our job we can it's very easy just you will put the uh, heat in the operation room three degrees up put the baby on the chest there is nothing can stop us it doesn't need any money and still we do it in turkey let's say i don't know about the world but in turkey it's like maybe five percent of the births are like this mm. uh, so why not it's very you can do it in a minute <laughs> but we are in the process of explaining people that this is not showing off this is for the future so when you have a nice pregnancy silent humanistic peaceful and the baby will have the imprints of peace and love and okay i can settle down but when you have all the pregnancy with fights and bombs and killings and you know losses COVID. COVID and stress and plus the birth in such an environment then the baby thinks okay this is my reality then I will fight for with anybody or I will respect to anybody who is trying to attack me or something like that imprints are in a different way then so trying to explain that okay environment is important pregnancy plus the birth we can't control the pregnancy at the moment, but we can control the, at least the birthing group. <laughs> so try to be respectful to the physiology and psychology. Enough. It doesn't need any money. That's right. all. Right. I think this is very important. Yeah. Again, Hakan, I am going to jump into I'm, your little again. Pers <laughs> personal first. Well, the, the, not the very personal, but the, the thing is, I wonder about your... Um, you know what I wonder about your hobbies. Mm. What are what, yeah? Hobbies. Because I I think oh. it is also important how you um, take care of your stress, uh, maybe. And uh, what do you do? Uh, and both maybe also it is also important how you resist <laughs> uh, to this kind of responses coming from your colleagues or uh, coming from the system. What do you do? I am I, I, I am a sailor. I like sailing, sailing with the wind. And there also we respect the mother nature and the sea and the wind. We don't fight with it. So every summer and winter I do sailing. Uh, plus, I was tango dancer. It was nice. And one more, th uh, one more thing is I like uh, play. I like working in the garden, planting and everything. So three of them. Wow, I think it is it is very much related with the birth, isn't it? Very much yeah, related in the with means the... of respecting the nature. Yes. Yeah. It is. You wait. Yeah. You don't control it. You just uh, dance with it. Exactly. And one more thing I did when I was uh, in, not young, when I started these childbirth education businesses in 2003, 
by chance, I did Aikido for three months. That oh. also changed a lot my life. And I got oh. a very big philosophy from there. Because in Aikido, you don't fight against. You use the power of the, someone attacking you. I use that very much in my debates and works. Who is attacking me? Saying charlatan to me. I was saying, okay, I can be. Tell me what it is and let's discuss it. <laughs> If you perceive me that I am, I will accept, you know. So I use Aikido a lot in my uh, dialogues with the obstetricians a lot of times. Okay. I think it's a very good uh, trick <clears throat> for suggestion for the because new, yeah. when you attack them, you with words, if you just turn your, like, let's say, lateral, the words go and hit the wall. I mean, they don't hit you. <laughs> So I, 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 ne I never felt I was hit. Once somebody said something about my mother, then I attacked them and they all said sorry. Once, only once. And they, they started questioning my mother's uh, midwifery, you know, things like that. Uh, once only. But the rest, I never uh, attacked anybody back. I just tried to get some information from them. Yeah, I think, you know, how uh, you experience your, you know, pregnancy, your birth, your childhood, Alka, uh, again, you're going to continue to experience your life and how you perceive uh, your profession, how you react to your colleagues, you know, how you, how you are, you are, you know, uh, what you are saying is very important, what you are doing, beautifully, gentle, kind and uh, respectful so it is beautiful <laughs> no, I, like what, what i am saying this because you're always mentioning about what you haven't done or uh, or maybe you well i have to do this 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 but i have been talking about uh, the same thing for 12 years nothing changed but actually uh, maybe you better to know lots of things change uh, so um, I must say, uh, as as a, in your team and also as a woman and also as a human being in Turkey, uh, I can feel women are actually trying to prefer something uh, about their labors, uh, and they they are trying to at least realize, oh, I have a God, I have I have the right to say things. I have a right to prefer something. Uh, and also we as a bird professionals uh, have decided or maybe realized to see the babies. They are human beings. Uh, I think this is, this is huge, Alkan. Yes, yeah, I mean, in some ways, yes, it is. We must be gentle to ourselves too. Yes, of course, we Thank did a you. lot. Thank you. You have to. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, we really did a lot. And uh, when I noticed this, uh, when people came to our childbirth education courses, courses, there were sometimes midwives coming, 17 year old proficiency, you know, 17 years, she's like a midwife and she thinks she knows everything, you know. And uh, then we asked them as the part of the education, okay, in one birth, you will be a doula. That's one of our uh, things to do. Yes, you are a midwife, but you won't touch any medical anything. You won't do the examination. You will not listen to the heartbeats. You will only work with the mother. And after that, at least four times I heard a midwife saying this very high, good midwife. Uh, working at the hospital, she said, they said, first time I saw the baby, first time in my life, first time I looked into the eyes of the mother and I noticed that she's feeling something. Mm -hmm. Before I was dealing with the, I'm, I wasn't a bad person, I was dealing with the trauma, with the bleeding, with the heartbeat, with the butter, butter, but I never saw that the babies were awake when they were born. Mm -hmm. So even that change is okay, yes, we are doing a lot. I mean, this is so simple <laughs> sometimes. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. But we never stop. We, we no, have, no, no. I understand this. We, yes. It's yes. never enough for us, you know. We have a lot, a, a lot to do, but without 
and also uh, blaming ourselves as you said thank you for that we have to be gentle too that's why i work with another colleague in my private obstetric life i decided uh, 12 years ago okay i will not work on my own anymore this is being a slave because for every woman you have to be in the birth this is being a slave I mean, you can't work like that that's why i respect uh, teamwork so i am a team with the, my colleague and i tell all my mothers that i can be there in your birth or the other doctor can be there you also met them and my aim is in every mother I am taking care of in all private surgery to, to be a bridge for them to notice something then, then to knock down that bridge as a teacher. So I try to see them to see the doctor as not very important. Mm -hmm. I try to knock down my proficiency in their eyes. The doctor is not that important. It Where's your ego, Hakan? Where's your ego? Happen. I still have it. I can't lose it. I still have it. But trying to <laughs> knock down that. So the midwife is important or whoever's supporting you there one-to-one. -one. Then the doctor, all the doctors will be doing the same. The rest, everybody. Mm -hmm. But uh, first yourself, your partner, together be team and someone to support you one-to-one, -one, then the doctor. That's okay. what I, so actually, yeah. it seems you got uh, lots of initiations, lots of new kind of uh, findings like birthing team, uh, like uh, have a backup doctors as a partner doctors together, not to be a slave, uh, working together with the midwife and birth psychotherapist together uh, and called it's a birth with no regret and having a doctors, I mean, uh, of course, it's also midwives and nurses, but especially I'm saying having had obstetricians into the doula training. These are very new uh, initiations. I yeah, and say. now in USA, it is being questioned also. They say we can harm the mothers and the babies because uh, a single doctor is taking care of the uh, family. And they're questioning, they're, they are now talking about, I can't remember, but somebody on duty in, because in America, probably they are not like that. In Turkey, in every hospital, there is an obstetrician working that night shift. In US, I think they're not like that. They are on call all the time. So they're questioning, oh, let's do it they, like this. And in Turkey also, they're questioning this uh, only being responsible. It doesn't work for an obstetrician like this. So being a team is very, 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 yes, important. And I have another project, which oh, is... Oh, yes. That was my, my next question. Yes. yes putting my, this is a fantasy project. Putting my scan on the, in the boat and taking care of the woman in the villages where I stop, in the seaside. <laughs> so they can come. I won't charge any money this time because I, probably I will be retired. They can bring chicken and cheese and bread and something. <laughs> Ex, ex Going partner. back to the old days, I'm my fantasy is being a doctor with you know the black uh, rectangle bag or you know case. Oh, <laughs> that's my fantasy. Okay, that that's something. This is something. So actually, this is also I guess it's your retirement project as well. But uh, let's. Um, well, the time is going a little bit, but uh, I also would like to ask what is. Your next step, that's what I was going to ask, as a profession, as a human being, as, as Hakan, uh, what is your plan? In this business, uh, you mean? Well, yeah? if you want to tell more. <laughs> I'm happy with my life and with my wife, so I don't want to change those at the moment. Oh, thank you. But uh, as this, I want to be my it's not a project but now i feel like it is time to scream more it's against me i know my character but it is time to say look you're not on the right way let's work together to everybody and uh, let's uh, if we don't work together it won't go anywhere so it's i want to be more sharp 
plus we just started uh, i'm thinking about let's bring prenatal psychology warm psychology warm ecology whatever you call it in a short brief booklet and the workshop to senior first year obstetricians plus midwifery schools they're not there plus uh, even high schools something like that start going back to the beginning a little bit otherwise after four years of them learning all interventions and cesareans it's very hard to change them because they think that's the normal still for example they think the twins cannot be born or breaches cannot be born or Anytime, whenever there is something we have to do, says that they think it is the norm and it is the 21st century obstetric. They have to learn that it's not. So my dream project is something like that, talking about birth psychology mm. together with uh, prenatal psychologists. That's beautiful. Actually, there is one question coming from Rita. Have you ever used the quality of music? music during the birth uh, during your the parents music. for instance yes your parents do bring their own music for the birth yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean they can or play they anything they want their own, yeah mm -hmm. yeah i don't play the music but the parents can play anything they like in the birthing room plus some if they have the ability to play an instrument they can bring their instruments some they did some came with some Chan needed the bells, things like yeah. that. Drums, yeah. they clean, they yeah. can do whatever they like. It's their room. I mean, okay, this is also something I think. I mean, birthing room, who is the responsible person in the birthing room? The doctors and midwives think they are. I think it's not. Birthing room is a place where the mother owns everything. I mean, it's their room, like a, a shay. Like their sacred place, kind yeah, of. It's their sacred. They let. Yeah. They decide who to let in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our mothers say, "Okay, I have a doula, but my doctor doesn't let the doula in." Do you want the doula? Yes. You are the person to having the doctor in, so you can say to the doctor, "Okay, bye bye." You can have another doctor <laughs> because you let people in. Not them. I mean, they can't do that. In any hospital, they can't do that. They have rules for infection controls and things and safety. And of course, I don't see any mother will do, uh, will say something against the safety rules and everything. They don't came over that. But they sh we should teach them that they are the owners of the birthing groups. Wow. They let people in. It is something they are that, yeah. we serve them. They honor us to be in. They choose us. We don't choose them. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, your. Uh, I'm going to write down your sentences after the uh, recording because uh, they are beautiful, lovely sentences that you want to scream. You said you want to scream. Here you are, Hakan. Uh, first of all, I'm screaming uh, now. Yes. What do you what do you, what do you want us to scream? Actually, this is your space, Alkan. My dear. I did scream a lot enough. I mean, uh, the, 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 when you ask me like this, I can't say anything to tell the truth. Where <laughs> it's like sp having all the spots on me. That let's say something important. No, I mean whatever. Let's let's see the babies. I mean it's enough. Let's see the babies. Let's. Let's work for the babies. I also tell the mothers, they say, I want this for my birth. I want that for my birth. I want this. I say, yes, you do want something, but it's not your birth. <laughs> Sorry, darling. Exactly. <laughs> it's not your birth at all. It's the baby's birth. And you are the carrier. You are the, you're, you're passing some new generation to the next generation. You are also a server, <laughs> a carrier, server. It's not your baby at all. It's, it doesn't own to you. You just deliver a new generation. It doesn't mean you, you, it, it, every, it, she or he belongs to you. So let's ask another question. We have to ask the new question. What my baby wants in birth? 
because after one five seconds or five minutes, 15 minutes, you go to your room with your baby on your chest and whatever you felt like, whatever your trauma had, however you are exhausted, when your baby cries, you ask what my baby wants. Why don't you ask it now? Because you become a mother, not when your baby is out of your womb. You are a mother when you conceive. Even before, but let's say when you conceive, you are a mother. First day, you are a mother. Two cells, four cells, you are a mother. So it's time to ask, what does four cells want? <laughs> then you start smoking, so stop smoking. Then you, you ask yourself, what does my baby eat? Okay, you take something from a can. Will my baby eat this? No, don't eat it then because your baby is eating in the womb. It's a life and, uh, and learning. You understand what my baby wants is the question of a mother giving birth, I think, in the future. Or oh, now, not in wow. the future. Wow. This is, this is so much respect, so much good, beautiful sentence. Well, I'm going to the end, slowly, slowly. So, as um, a the ordinary in I would like to ask Hakan, uh, what is really your suggestion uh, for your colleagues and for bird professionals? Uh, I don't know, whatever you want uh, for the new generation. What would you like to um, add? To, to the obstetricians, you mean, what will I say? If if you like to, yes. Uh, I mean, you can say anything for the obstetrician, for the new generation obstetricians, for the birth professionals, or maybe for parents. Uh, you can say different things or something mutual. Uh, what would you like to add, add for your talk in the end? For obstetricians, I would say join one real international non pref does it a, a non hospital based you know not ruled by a system uh, childbirth education with families and try to feel what they need there and what it is taught to them and then they will change one only one weekend will be enough for them to see that and if you are pregnant or your wife is pregnant Please go to a childbirth education course. They don't. They don't. As if they are not mothers. I mean, being an obstetrician doesn't mean that you are a perfect family or mother and father. And so you are in zero level when you are pregnant. It doesn't. And in minus three level because you are an obstetrician. You are you are poisoned with something going wrong in birth, and you are poisoned with that. You are in the at the minus three level so you need it more so go to childbirth education and start stopping the spotlight and being silent after birth and respectful to the mother and the baby that's all i mean not much to do then you will all your interventions as evidence will cease down immediately you don't need much because you know how to deliver babies it's time to learn how not to deliver babies, which needs big respect. <laughs> it's not easy. I, I say to the obstetricians coming to our courses, I say, this is a nine month course of putting your hands like this in birth, you know? It's not easy, but I will teach you. It's, it will be fun. You will have great fun <laughs> because they know technically what to do when something goes wrong. No? So that's all for families, of course, you are, you are a, uh, I can't remember the English word, you are a passenger or she is a passenger, the baby is the passenger, you are, you are, a, you are giving hand to the next generation, so learn your rights, learn your rights, it doesn't mean attack the system or attack the doctor, attack, it doesn't work like that, it means no with nice and sympathy and respect, learn your rights and demand. So ask for it. If that hospital doesn't give it to you, don't fight. Go to another hospital and tell others that this hospital doesn't respect you. 
simple. Social media is great, but don't attack the health workers. <laughs> I don't mean that. And that's, then the, it will change. If you don't bring any demands as families, nothing will change. Nobody changes on their own. So that's wow. what I need. And let's come together all over the world. And this Congress, I think it is a chance for all the prenatal sciences coming together. I didn't know that there were so many in many countries. I thought there was only APA and ISPPM, and, but I now see that there were many working on it, which is a big chance. And I think the, okay, that came, the last sentence came now. I but think all birth psychologists, prenatal psychologists, trauma psychologists, whatever they are, all of them working on womb ecology. I think they are the doulas of the future of the mothers and obstetricians and everybody, all health work. Anybody responsible for birth, they need your doula service. You need to be with them and let them see the real world of obstetrics and psychology in obstetrics. I think that's my, I ask from birth psychologists, to do this. Mm, okay. Well, uh, at least uh, I myself promise to do this. Uh, so I will convey the information to my colleagues all over the world, Hakan. And uh, I think it's time to finish here. Uh, I just checked uh, if there is any other questions in the chat, uh, but I will also um, record this. Um, Rita says uh, we must attach their insurance companies. They are more and more telling parents what their cho choices are. Uh, so I think uh, it is also important what the other countries' uh, realities are uh, and the cultural uh, birth cultures are. So I think it's time to stop here. So it, is, it was a great honor. Uh, and very, very <laughs> joyful to talk with you. Um, and uh, of course, this is the first uh, event uh, in the prenatal conferences. Um, it will be continue. Uh, please continue to check in our website uh, who is coming next and uh, when and also uh, mm, for Olga right and please join us next John Turner yes thank you Olga thank you so if you go to our website uh, you can see when and what time uh, and also please convey the information uh, for your social media and for your uh, contacts uh, as much as possible uh, and it is not only this pre-congress is happening, of course. If you go and check our website, uh, the, the uh, closest activity is Analyze It uh, from Olga Goini. Uh, so it is coming also soon. It's also another beautiful, beautiful uh, event. Uh, and uh, to take a look, uh, 10 cases, from prenatal perspective. Uh, so if you want to join, please also go and register yourself. Uh, and also uh, you can see submission proposals for the Congress. So if you want to present something, it could be an event, it could be a workshop, it, it could be a lecture, or it could be something related with the, um, uh, any kind of art related with prenatal science. So please don't hesitate. Uh, uh, if you submit, uh, we're gonna see, and uh, absolutely we're gonna find uh, where you will be. Okay. So Hakan, uh, let's end it here. And thank you so much, really, uh, for being our first, very first uh, <laughs> guest. Uh, it is also uh, very important for us uh, and you again being a very courageous and very brave <laughs> to be the first one 
so thank you so much really uh, being I, our guest i thank you uh, for being gentle thank you very much oh. <laughs> I support it too much. Yes, I I know how, how deep you can go i know very well so <laughs> thank you for not going that deep at least you let thank me you. escape from some bits you know <laughs> well yes yes and i will continue at home <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much being a guest and also uh, being being my partner in my life. Thank you. Thank and you. I want to I want to add here and uh, uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Take care of yourself. <laughs>